Uh, let's continue this conversation with former Ford CEO and CNBC contributor Mark Fields. Mark, uh, good morning to you. Nice to have you with us. Uh, you know, what's your take on, on the Chinese EV makers overall and, for example, the quality of the product they're putting out at a certain price point? Yeah, well, I, I agree completely with what Phil just said. If you look at the Chinese EV products right now, they are very, very good. And, and listen, the Chinese knew that they missed, they missed the opportunity with internal combustion engine vehicles in terms of uh, driving market share, not only in their home market, but abroad. And so they doubled down on the EV market, both from a tech standpoint, a battery standpoint, and from a vehicle design and quality standpoint. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're very competitive in their home market. As you heard, they're gaining market share uh, in Europe. These, these products are, are, in some cases, world class. And I think uh, people are going to be really surprised by not only that, but the price points, uh, which are very important to consumers uh, in terms of adopting EVs. It would be difficult, I imagine, Mark, though, for Chinese uh, EV makers to come to the United States and have a fighting chance um, simply because of the, the barriers that are erected in terms of the IRA requiring certain processes to be in the United States, and the Chinese automakers don't, don't have that capacity yet. Yeah, you're exactly right, Melissa. I mean, they're not going to be eligible for, for example, the $7,500 uh, incentive that's available if you meet the local assembly requirements and element requirements of, of the batteries. You know, that being said, if, uh, if they have a major cost advantage to start with, you know, you could argue that even if they don't have those incentives, they could still be competitive from a price point standpoint. But then you get into issues around, okay, they have to either build a distribution network or sell direct, which is, you know, a challenge. And then the geopolitical issues, you know, buying a, a Chinese vehicle uh, in the U.S. and all the, 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 the thoughts that go along with that, that's, you can't calculate the impact that that would have. Mark, I haven't spoken to at least since we sort of got those announcements from GM and Ford in terms of using Tesla's charging network. I know you may have spoken about it previously, but I'm just curious to get your take on the significance of that, what it's going to mean, you know, if we do finally have it would seem one standard, for example, for charging vehicles here in the U.S. Well, it was a very important announcement. I think, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when you look at the production that's starting to gen up at the, uh, the automakers like Ford and GM and others, the products are coming, the production's coming online, and the automakers and their CEOs are saying, hey, you know, we, we have to get rid of any fear from the consumer about being able to charge their vehicle. And so this was a, you know, the, the question is not, are, is EVs going to continue to become, you know, a higher percentage of the marketplace, but it's how far and how fast. And when they look at their products coming, they said, listen, we have got to accelerate the availability of chargers for consumers or we're going to have a big problem. And I think that's why they made the agreement with, uh, with Tesla. And the other thing, uh, David, is it's not only the availability of the chargers, it's it, or the, the amount of chargers, it's the dependability and the availability of them and the quality of them. Because, you know, there's a number of them. I think it was a study done, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago that said one out of every five chargers with the CCS standard was not working. So they get dependability and quality with Tesla, and they get more of them, which is hugely important. 